It's day 10 of drawing everything every day. And today we're gonna be drawing, it's a little version of a big toy that I used to have. Uh, there were Shogun Warriors uh, was the name of the toy line. And this one is called Mazinga. One of my favorite toys as a kid. The, the big one's like two feet tall and they could shoot their arm like this. And every parent was worried that You'll shoot your eye out, kid. But somehow we all survived with most of our eyes intact. So um, that's a good thing. When we got these as kids, because the, the big ones are huge, and I'll, I'll show you them one day, but the big ones are, you know, like I said, they're two feet tall, and they're they're plastic, and they're, and they're so cool. But uh, when we got these little ones, they're, they're metal, and you could put them in your pocket, and you could take them everywhere, so it was just the best. And so I, I always loved these. Now the wings are the, the most annoying thing on this, because, um, and I never really kept the wings on, um, but let's just try to work out the width of the wings first and then we'll try to fit Mazinga in somewhere from there. So I'm um, just working out the general shapes, the head, the, the chest, the waist, the, the torso, the, not the torso, the hips, uh, and then the legs. So I just wanna make sure everything fits. So I'm going as light as possible with this, just to kinda just make sure that I've got I've got enough room for everything. Spoiler alert, I don't. But I will give it a shot. I say I don't because I'm, I'm now in the future. That's past me we're looking at and, and I already know all of the mistakes I made doing this. Um, so uh, another artist would probably work out their um, their proportions a little bit more, but I just wanted to get right into drawing the head. And, uh, and of course, that's always my downfall is I go right to the thing I want to do and I don't triple check and whatever. So here I am probably right now realizing, oh crap, if the tip of this is there and it's like another half more just to get to the edge, no, I definitely don't have room for the wings. And, um, I'm kicking myself now and I'm probably just realizing that, oh, forget about it. I'll just, the wings are gonna now go off the the page. So I tried to do it, but not gonna happen. And I'm realizing, oh, it's foreshortening. I should probably make this a little bit bigger. Yeah, that's, that's better. These are fairly easy shapes to do. So, um, in the cylinders and balls and triangles, you know, um, it, it, it fairly, fairly simple to do, but come on, realize that. Yeah, I realized. All right. There will be no edges of the, yep. Nope. See, I noticed that I started doing it and I, and then I looked at the photo reference or I looked at the toy and you see how it's at the silver part, not the black part. And so I had to make a, a line lower. So I'm, I'm, looking at where okay it's coming from off the hip and then I'm, I'm using that as my waypoint as to where the wings are um, and that's what we're doing we're, we're always going to look at um, we're referencing where parts intersect and that's that's you know that's how we get our proportions and I'd like the 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 red thing to be a little bigger so I'm trying to stretch it out a little bit it, it feels bigger in in the photo than it does in my drawing and I go through this back and forth where I go oh it doesn't look right and then I go sometimes I go yeah and I try to fix it and other times I go no one's gonna notice and so I go back and forth uh, it's kind of like self-editing and I, I just have to I have conversations with myself while I'm drawing this isn't right this isn't right that came out pretty good okay do more of that um, I'm gonna have to go back and fix this. I don't wanna erase. Well, this is just a drawing. It's no big deal. It's okay if it's off by a little bit. Yes, but if it's off by a little bit, then you know the rest of it's gonna be off or it's gonna look weird or it's not gonna look as cool. And these are the conversations that go on in my head as I'm doing this. And um, I, I'm pretty sure every artist does it. And I hope every artist does it. Please tell me that you do. Um, but um, yeah, this is this is this is making art. It's it's second guessing. It's it's learning to live with the mistakes, and um, 
and just being happy with the process. And that's something I'm really trying to do a lot is just be happy with the action of making art. I don't have to always like the result of making art, but I can like the action of making art. Okay, it's at this point that I realized I should at least show one of the ways that you can do human proportions, and that is to measure the head. Um, so I'm just gonna draw, that's gonna be the size of the head, um, and you're gonna measure how many heads tall a person is. And, and usually it's six or seven-ish. Um, this toy uh, turns out that it is gonna be about five. And so what I'll do is then draw five heads uh, and then I'll know that's how tall my character is going to be. Now, as someone who's been doing this forever, I don't have to do this anymore. I eyeball it and I'm still wrong, you know. I mean, I get my proportions wrong all the time and, and it will help. But just if, you, if you're just starting off and you want to do that, just measure how many heads and use that to kind of get your uh, proportions started. And remember, we're always doing our proportions based off of something, that very first shape. And uh, when we do the car, we made a, you know, like a box. When we did the, um, the camera, we did a kind of a rectangle. When we did the apple, well, there's nothing else off the apple, but you know what I'm saying. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna create a shape and then use all of your proportions based off of that. So um, a head is not a bad way to start. Okay, so um, yeah, I am this again. This isn't a difficult character to do, but for some reason I wasn't very happy with it. I think the a lot of my proportions. I started this around 9:30, 10 o'clock, and. Uh, you know, it wasn't like, oh my God, it's so early in the morning, because I'm usually up pretty early, but some days you just wake up and your hand and your eye just aren't working well together. And I just think today I wasn't drawing my best, but I drew. And uh, not every day is gonna be a great drawing day, um, but the mere act of drawing is a good thing, you know? And if you're here and you're drawing with me, Thank you. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, I hope you're enjoying this. And I'm really proud of you for drawing every day. And if you're not drawing every day, I'm still proud of you. Um, I don't draw every day, just so you guys know. I, I don't draw every day. Uh, I try to, but life gets in the way. So, and, and for those of you wondering, I took 10 years off from drawing. 10 years, oh, a decade. Um, I just was tired of my art. I was tired of the colored pencils and I just stuck with CGI 3D stuff. I made a comic book series called the Dreamland Chronicles for 10 years. Um, and then when I was ready, I came back and I took up watercolor. So people, people sometimes just need time to walk away and uh, there's no shame in that. So. Don't kick yourself for not drawing enough. Don't kick yourself for drawing too much. Don't kick, your, don't kick yourself. That, that's a good motto to live by. Um, don't kick yourself. I'll, I'll make stickers. So I am drawing this, this fist and this is foreshortening. So the, the shoulder is smaller um, and then the, for, the, the bicep area is a little bigger. Then the forearm is a little bigger than that and then the fist is even bigger than that. Um, that's called foreshortening. That's when something is coming directly at you. Um, the, the How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way does a great job of showing that, and that's kind of where I learned this. But um, it, it kind of uh, gives you the illusion of something coming towards you. And if you look at the other arm, which is coming slightly to you at maybe like a 15, 20 degree uh, angle, but it is for the most part vertical. You'll see that the shoulder and the hand uh, are the same size pretty much. And uh, but in, in in the other one, the shoulder is smaller than the hand, and that's because the shoulder is closer to us, and objects are closer to us are uh, larger. Just like in Jurassic Park. I have no idea if anybody got that joke. It was a stupid one. Must go faster. 
And here I'm realizing that the bicep area is smaller uh, than the forearm area. So I, I had to move that line up. Um, and um, and that's fine. That's that's just uh, now I am looking at my proportions as I'm getting, you know, focusing a little bit more on that and and doing that. But uh, these are, this is, this is, it's a, this is a fun one to draw. Like I would rather draw Mazinga any day over a, a Hot Wheel. <laughs> so I'm still sore about that Hot Wheel. I think the Hot Wheel came out okay, but um, like I actually, in the grand scheme of things, I think this drawing came out worse than the Hot Wheel, but I had more fun drawing this one um, than I did the Hot Wheel. So the irony of it all. Okay, and I've been talking for 11 minutes and now I'm bored of hearing myself talk. So, I'm gonna answer some questions from the comments. And as always, please leave me a comment here and I will check next time I make uh, a, a video and I will read the comments, hopefully. Um, so, Anime Art Y asks, Hello Scott, do you have an opinion on anime art style? Um, I, I love anime art and I used to copy it when I was in my late teens, early 20s, um, I was into Dragon Ball Z, um, and and I would, I, I was more into the, the the dynamic poses that you would get in in anime. For I, I liked manga for the style of drawing, and there was a an artist named Masume Shiro, I think is his name. I'm guessing uh, he did um, Appleseed. And, uh, and I really liked that style. And so I tried to add that to my art for a little bit and it, it just didn't stick, but I did like it. And uh, Flaxic asks, is it bad for me to use AI art as a tool or should I avoid it altogether? Um, no, you absolutely shouldn't avoid it. Um, I've been dabbling with Mid Journey to try to understand it a little more. And um, the part that alarms me is I see actual, the original artist signatures in the corner. That's the part that alarms me. Now, I've looked into using AI art as reference. So, um, say I want uh, to, to paint uh, Galadriel from uh, The Lord of the Rings in an Art Nouveau style, but with a bit more of an influence of Gustav Klimt, and I want um, her in Rivendell and I want you know I can put all that stuff and then it'll spit some stuff out and that would be a good jumping point and so for me I think AI art for artists can be used as a um, kind of like an idea board um, give me ideas give me some reference oh I really like that face I'm gonna use that and and it's all copyright free in the fact that you can't copyright AI art so you can use the reference um, I would always be careful with the reference that you use just because it doesn't necessarily do the best anatomy so double check your anatomy but I think you can use art uh, AI art um, I, th I think it'll be a good tool for artists and um, but yeah it's still stealing from real artists so just be aware of that gold skull art asks what do I do if I mess up on a piece but I have already put hours into it you know I've done that so many times um, that's there's a video uh, about the uh, the corner of shame and that's what when that happens to me they go into the corner of shame because I put too much time into it to throw it out and um, and I really like some parts about it and I don't want to get rid of it but I'll tell you I never go back to them I've never gone back to the corner of shame and finished a piece um, and uh, I, I would say the thing that has kept me from putting more pieces of art into the corner of shame is doing the part that I'm the least confident about first like I'm I'm very confident with my people but I'm not confident on my backgrounds so I always do my backgrounds first because I have so many pieces in the corner of shame where I really like the character but then I got to the background and I messed it up or I didn't like it and so but I spent so much time on that character and I really like the character I didn't know what to do with it um, that that's my bit of advice um, the other thing you can do is wipe away the parts that you don't like and start over or hold on thank you mr. clock you can uh, sometimes even cut out the parts that you like and paste it onto a new piece oh hold on mr. clock in the recording
and pencil sharpener. Okay, you got two Mr. Clocks and a pencil sharpener on this one. That's pretty cool. The Luca asks, hello Scott, today I wanted to ask you, where do you think your career could have been right now if you wouldn't have chosen art as well? Um, gosh, I don't know what I would have done if I, I, I have no other skills other than art. I mean, I've developed skills over the years. I've learned how to animate, I've learned how to write, um, direct. Um, I'm a pretty good producer too, but those all kind of started off with my art. Um, I don't know. Um, I'd maybe be employee of the month at McDonald's. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the what if story. I, I, uh, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I like, I really, I'm looking back and I'm going, there really wasn't anything else that I was good at and anything else that was really interesting to me. All right, and Terry O'Daniel asks, if you could visit any architecture in the world, what would it be and why? Ooh, um, the pyramids, I think. Uh, I, th I, you know, they, they've, the pyramids and the Sphinx, I think would be absolutely fantastic to see. I'm terrified to go um, because it's, I just, I don't like uncertainty when I go places and that just feels like a really uncertain kind of place. Um, yeah, yeah, so, but I would love to see it. I would love to see the, the pyramids. All right, we ran out of questions in last, uh, in, in the uh, camera video. So I went back one and uh, we have one from Hairline21 who asks, do you think using hand as reference for a beginner drawer is good? Absolutely. Um, I hate drawing hands. And so when I do have to draw hands, I will always use reference and your own hand is the best reference. So I would absolutely say, please do that. Pencil sharpener. Okay, so here's the good news and the bad news. Uh, the good news is, uh, I think I've answered every question. Um, the bad news is, I think I've answered every question. Uh, <laughs> I don't have anything to talk about and I still have quite a ways to go. Um, and I don't wanna leave you all here in silence uh, because I love and adore you all. So um, I don't know what I should be doing. I, I'm not a good conversationalist, I'll say that. I could use this as therapy lesson. I could just talk about my feelings and my hopes and my dreams and... Oh, yeah, I, I am... I'm not one to fill up empty space. Um, you know, there's people who are really good at that. They could just, you, like, you don't even need to be in the room. They'll just keep talking. I, I'm I'm looking at my wife right now. Um, not Not actually, but... If she was here, she know I'd be. She would know that I was talking about her. She walks around upstairs just talking. She talks to herself, whole, whole, whole on conversations, and um, she'll tell me that she's talking to the dog, but she wasn't. She was talking to herself. I can't do that. Can't do it. It's a gift. She has a gift. I don't. Okay, I am going to read a quote or two from Neil Gaiman's Art Matters because I have five more minutes of this and I don't want to leave you alone. Um, if you're drawing and you're drawing along with me, I'm going to keep you company. So let's open up this book and let's see here. Um, the first quote is, the world always seems brighter when you've just made something that wasn't there before. Okay, this part is called Make Good Art. Cat exploded, make good art. Somebody on the internet thinks what you do is stupid or evil or it's all been done before, make good art. Probably things will work out somehow and eventually time will take the sting away, but that doesn't matter. Do what only you do best, make good art. Make it on the good days too. And fifthly, while you're at it, make your art. Do the stuff that only you can do. 
The urge starting out is to copy and that's not a bad thing. Most of us only find our own voices after we've sounded like a lot of other people. But the one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can. The moment that you feel that just possibly you're, walk, you're walking down the street naked, ex exposing too much of your heart and your mind and what exists on the inside, showing too much of yourself, that's the moment you may be starting to get it right. Make interesting, amazing, glorious, fantastic mistakes. Break rules. Leave the world more interesting for your being there. Make good art. Those are just a couple quotes from Neil Gaiman's Art Matters. And Pencil Sharpener. <laughs> I've only killed two minutes. I still have three more minutes to go. Oh, this is just agony. I, I, I'm, I'm going to need to come up with something else to do for this. Because I, I like doing this. Um, but I'm so much better during the live when I'm answering questions. Because I, I this is why I'll never get up in front of an audience and speak. I'll answer questions. But I will never get up in front of an audience and speak. Because, oh my god, I am so boring. I, I'm bored listening to myself tell you how boring I am um, but yeah I it's funny because as I was drawing this I was like I know I'm gonna I, I know I've been at this for a while and I know future Scott's gonna be really mad at me but oh I still got a little bit more of this to do it oh I still got a little bit more of that to do so thanks a lot past Scott aren't we always fighting against our past selves who always leave us the extra work to do that we that should have been done way back then or some thoughtfulness <sighs> Pencil sharpener. And can you hear that bird outside? They're just going and going and going. Like they don't realize that I'm recording here. Well, we've still got a few more minutes to go, so why don't you guys do some, tell me something. How is your day going? How's your art? How's your drawing of Mazinga? Have you been drawing every day? Um, are you liking it? I bet your art's improved. You know, that's, it's a, uh, it's a good thing. What we're doing here is a good thing. Making art is a good thing. We're, we're creating something where there was nothing, right? So that's a good thing. And here's the part that I knew I was going to annoy myself with. I was like, I'm going to go back in and re-outline everything. Take that future, Scott. I need a time machine so I can go back into the past and punch past Scott for this. Stupid. Yeah, yeah, just grab that brush and just brush those little specks off. I got nothing to do. It's just Tuesday morning, there's a bird chirping outside and... <sighs> I'm keeping my friends company. But no, you just, you just take your time. Yeah, that's a pretty outline there, Scott. Did not need that line there, though. Almost done. I'm um, seriously, I'm just gonna... Next time, I'm just gonna break out The Hobbit and start with that. Just start reading. I, I'm not very good at reading, you know, I mean... I get... Anyways, public reading. Yeah, that's another thing I like. Yes, I'm done! If you actually lived through that entire thing, my apologies. Um, you are a better person than I am, and I love you, and I can't wait to see your art, and thank you for following along with all of these, and show me your Mazinga.